Hi guys, the goal of this lab is to get you guys a little more comfortable with assembly and we're going to do that by writing some C code and generating assembly from that C code and taking a look at it. To do that today we're going to use Visual Studio. So we'll go ahead and open it. We're going to create um, a new project. empty project and we'll name it assembly. Go ahead and note the location. Uh, so this is the default location will be your user space and C users and then the folder source repos. We'll create. And now we have an empty project. There's no source file in it. So we need to add a source file. So we'll come over to Solution Explorer on the right right click on source files, add new item. Now we're going to add a .cpp file and we'll just name it assembly source add. Alright, so now we can put some code in here. Um, so let's just do something simple uh, the basic guts of a C program, int main. So now let's put some code in here. We'll just do something simple. We need to start with the basic guts of a C program. So int main. And then let's do a for loop. For int i equals 0. i is less than 10. Sounds like a good number. i plus plus, close paren, open brackets. And let's print, uh, let's print i. Um, so we'll do printf uh, i equals, uh, and then that format specifier for the integer we'll pass in. And then we're probably going to want a new line. And then we need to pass in the i semicolon. All right, and IntelliSense is yelling about that printf because we actually need to import a library to be able to do that. So up at the top, we'll add a pound include stdio.h. And let's just make sure our code works. So we'll go to debug, start without debugging. It's asking if we want to build, do we want to compile this binary? And that's a yes. And sure enough, it does what we would expect. It iterates through 10 times, printing the value of i each time. All right. So now we want to generate assembly from this code uh, and look at it in Visual Studio. But first, modern compilers add a whole lot of junk to code, um, a lot of it in the name of efficiency and security. Uh, that stuff is important, but when we're learning assembly, it can complicate things. So we're going to change some settings in Visual Studio to try to get it to generate as simple of code as we can. Uh, so we're going to come back over to Solution Explorer, right-click Assembly. So right-click the name of your project, whatever that may be. For me, it's Assembly. Properties. And we're going to come down here to the C, C++, and go to Code Generation. And we're going to turn a lot of things off here. So we're going to uh, put a no for enable string pooling. We are going to turn off exceptions so that we don't have to deal with um, exception handling frames or any of that nonsense. Uh, we're going to go to default for basic runtime checks. We are going to turn off security checks. And then we're going to come down here to linker and general, and we're going to turn off incremental linking. And we are going to actually come back up here under C++, 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 and then go to advanced. And we're going to compile this as C code. So we don't have any C++ structures. And apply. OK. Now I need to place a breakpoint in our code. 
So I'll put it on our for statement, our first execute, our first statement, and then I will start debugging. So debug, start debugging. We need to build it again since we changed all those settings. And here we go. So we're going to right click somewhere within our code and click go to disassembly. And we can see the x86 that was generated from our code. You guys probably won't have this memory one field turned on by default. To turn that on, you need to go to debug, windows, memory, and then turn on memory one. And that will bring this guy up. So let's add some registers to our watch. So we can see EBP minus four is being used in quite a few places. We can see EAX is being used. So let's click on that add item to watch and just type EAX, enter, and you can watch that register. Let's watch EBP, or let's watch EBP minus four. Um, you can type whatever, whatever watches you want in there, but I think those are the main ones for us. So, uh, at this point you kind of appreciate IDA and its arrows and blocks, um, but it's kind of nice to just be able to look at code within the um, compiler that you're using, or within the IDE that you're using. So, we can make some quick uh, observations here. Um, first off, this EBP-4 we're moving a zero into it. And um, over here we can see that we're moving it into EAX, then adding one to it, and then moving EAX back into EBP minus four. Um, and we can see that we're comparing it to hex A, which is 10. Uh, and so we can, from that, draw the conclusion that EBP minus four is our I in our loop, um, and that this code is all of the control structures for the loop. Um, these jumps are going to be to jump into or out of the loop. Um, and so let's take a look at what the value of EBP minus four is. So we have it in watch, and it looks like the value is a really big number, but that is actually just a memory address um, so if we copy that value, bring it up here to our memory view, paste it in there, then we sync to that location. Uh, we haven't actually initialized it yet, but we should see as soon as we step over this instruction that this should become a zero. So if we debug, what's my step over F10? We see that our EBP minus four was just zeroed out. Um, and we can iterate through our loop. We can see we're comparing our EBP minus four to 10. We know that zero is less than 10. So we're gonna come uh, push the parameters that are necessary for our printf. So we see two things that are getting pushed into this call to printf. First off, we're moving our EBP minus four into EAX and then pushing EAX. We know that this EBP minus four holds our I, and since we wrote the code, we know that we're printing the value of our I, so it makes sense that needs to go into the format specified, into the printf call. Um, the second thing is this memory address. Now, IDA would have done us the favor of labeling this, um, but since we're not in IDA, we'll have to copy it, bring it up here, enter it, uh, if this requires a 0x at the beginning, and you can see that this is our format specifier string. And so those get pushed into the call to print f, and then this is just cleaning up the stack, and we loop back to our control structures, where we're going to move our counter into EAX, add one to EAX, move it back into EBP plus four for storage, compare it to our control, and then jump back into our loop and repeat this process. Um, so again, it can just be very nice to be able to quickly write up some code, 
and then jump into uh, debugger and view the assembly when you're learning assembly and want to figure out how different things work. I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, this lab was very much inspired by Zeno Kava's Intro to x86 class that's posted on opensecuritytraining.info. That class is a two-day class uh, during which Zeno spends a lot of time in Visual Studio doing exactly this. Um, another option though, if you are more comfortable in IDA, I'll go ahead and terminate this, is to just go grab the binary itself and drop it into IDA. And so we noted earlier that our repo is stored at our user, C users, username, source repos. Go into assembly. We're going to drop into the debug folder. And we can grab that exe out of the folder and drop it into IDA. And there's a mess of code here, but we're going to use our string to find our uh, source code. So we're going to open our string subview, find our print string, double click it, click on its name, hit X, and go to that function where it's declared. And this is the exact same code we were just looking at in Visual Studio and we can debug it just like we debug any other code. Well, almost. Because of how Visual Studio generated the compilation and the information IDA has available to it, it will actually give you the source code over here. Um, we don't want that, so we're going to go over to IDA view and hit space and we should be broken on our breakpoint. If for some reason you're not, go into IDA view, click into the view, and then click the blue arrow next to EIP, and that will sync your screen with the instruction pointer, which will be on your breakpoint. So assembly takes some time to get familiar with, um, and to be honest, most of my first experiences with assembly were like this. They were me writing code and then compiling it and then examining it to figure out um, how the different code that I wrote turned into assembly. Um, and that's how I learned a lot of it, so I hope that will help you guys too.